Okay, so I'm Alain Chilotal from Paris. Um, it's my first HCA meeting, so I'm really glad to be here. I learned a lot. And I will present you what we discussed uh, together at the Data Biology um, at last session, um, so which is uh, developing uh, from what I've seen, so it's good. And as you will understand, for, uh, as lag development is a bit chaotic still. It's not perfectly uh, um, defined, but uh, we're making progress. As, as Scott mentioned, we wanted to um, try to see whether we can define uh, key questions we'd like to address in, in the future. Uh, what should be the goal of this uh, um, uh, human cell, uh, developmental cell atlas? So and, uh, one, one key question is, okay, where do we come from? Okay, what is our uh, cellular uh, history? Uh, how do you go from an egg uh, to a people, someone like me? Why are we all uh, looking different? Uh, so, so what are the mechanisms in development that generates uh, diversity and uh, identity? Uh, so, so there's really a basic uh, question that is, I think, uh, uh, one of the most important ones. Um, uh, then another thing which is very also relevant is like, um, well, obviously a lot of developmental disorders. So we just give you a, a few uh, uh, features, but there are birth defects uh, of various regions, and 3% of births uh, are, are basically kids have uh, some defects. And it goes to, uh, as I pointed out here, about 7% of life-born infants, so it's quite not a rare uh, thing. So, so if you understand development, you will probably understand, try to uh, understand what went wrong and how can you define some strategy to prevent this from occurring, but it's, it's a challenge, or at least to try to, to, to cure it somehow. Uh, and, and, and so other examples, um, and for instance, four of 1,000 birth uh, kids have uh, brain defect, causal defect. So it's not something that is rare, it's rather uh, common. So what is also uh, as, uh, interesting and a challenge, and I'll come back to that at the end, for, for human development, that the uh, uh, environment of the embryo is changing all the time. So um, you're not all like a biologist or no, no biologist, so it, it's, it's supposed that uh, maybe half of your motor neurons, you will lose them during development. So the brain produces more cells than it uses later. So if you count cells in adult brain, it doesn't give you an idea of how many cells were generated during development. So, so, so it's really important to understand where those cells was, uh, are generated and how they're dying and where they're dying. Uh, so cells also are moving so, so during development. So the organs, they, the cells are in the brain as well and all the tissues. Uh, so understanding those interactions, all cells move, is something that's important. So to capture this, uh, this is, is not something that is uh, easy. And some heavens also are quite rare. So, so it will be hard like uh, on uh, one single uh, embryo or fetus to capture those rare events. And I'll come back to that thing. You might need to define ways to, to capture those, those events if you really want to have a good idea of how human development proceeds. Um, so uh, it's also very important because in the meantime, uh, uh, surgeons and, and uh, people who do work on, on, on pregnancies that have access to many, uh, to many, many uh, new tools to try to match in embryos and fetuses in utero, and they're acting now on those fetuses to do surgery. But, but basically, uh, for embryos, they cannot do much, but at fetal stages, uh, there's no real uh, reference atlas. So, so us, for instance, we're contacted by, by surgeons who are, want to correlate their like, real-life images with real life data. So, so, and, and that's really a challenge. If you cut something, you want to know what is around, and there's nothing uh, uh, here at the moment. So it's really uh, very important to try to uh, have, uh, provide them with a, a reference atlas. Okay, so other things is what is specific then to, uh, to, to human development if you do, uh, um, want to do a, an atlas. Uh, um, so what are the challenges of single cell analysis in developing tissues? Uh, you won't dissociate them the same way you dissociate an adult brain if you want to purify single cells. So what we heard yesterday uh, that was applied to adult <laughs> organs, you're going to have to modify it probably to apply it to developing tissues. So, so you shouldn't assume that what works for adults works also for embryonic or fetal tissue. So it's really something that is uh, very important. Uh, there are some uh, ethical issues. So obviously, so not all countries are equal in terms of getting uh, samples like embryos and fetus. In some countries, it's completely uh, impossible. Uh, in Europe, it's very heterogeneous. Uh, some places, uh, you, you can get them, but other uh, countries, it's, it's impossible. So that's why an atlas like this is very important, because at least the data we're going to provide, uh, they're going to be useful for everyone. So, so they cannot access the embryo, but they can still uh, have access to our data, so they can still try to understand things and to, to help us. So it's something that is very important, but that has to be uh, discussed. So it's also, um, uh, understanding development is very important for regenerative medicine. 
So many people now, they are producing iPS cells, they're making organoids, they derive cells that eventually they want to transplant or they even starting to transplant uh, uh, into, uh, into humans. And, and you need to know well development to, to also know later to check if the cells you're producing or the cascade of events that lead to those cells uh, really mimics what occurs in development. So are the, the adult cells generated from an organoid uh, or you're going to transplant, is it really equivalent, uh, or in, in even in terms of development, to, to what you would have uh, during a normal development? So can you, can you, if you understand development, can you then guide and, and, and help uh, the differentiation of those cells? And can you also model diseases? As I mentioned, some of uh, uh, some uh, uh, developmental diseases, uh, we don't have any models because the kids don't survive, and so we don't know exactly what happens. And here, if you can uh, really make like uh, developmental models, then maybe you'll be able to understand better those diseases. So they are really uh, key, uh, key issues for us. Um, so, so what do we gain from doing this atlas? So as I said, I think it's very important, it's basic knowledge. So we discussed that. It, will, it might be hard to, to fund some of these uh, uh, um, projects because it's, it's basic, uh, it's very uh, descriptive, uh, but we still think it has a lot of uh, interest. And as I said, it's important for regenerative medicine, but it's also important for cancer. So there are more and more evidence that uh, for many cancers, it's something that has to do with wrong aberrant development. So, so it's really important to, again, to understand cell proliferation, neurogenesis in an embryo, if you want to understand what goes, when, uh, what, what goes wrong uh, in medulloblastoma or other kind of, uh, of cancer. So, so this is really something that is uh, uh, really uh, important. So, so, so at the end, what we tried to do was to define some um, uh, key challenges that unfortunately we couldn't address because we don't have enough time. But, but uh, and, and some, uh, um, I've listed some of them here. So time. So uh, uh, that was, I think, something important that we discussed. Uh, if you work on, on adults, um, time is still present because you're aging. So that's really something uh, that is important. But for us, things, as I said, change very quickly. So, so the, the time and the, the thing that the embryo is something that is changing all the time is very uh, difficult. So how do we capture uh, uh, something that is just emerging in a tissue that contains cells at different uh, time of their development. Uh, so that's really something that's important. If you take, like I do imaging, if you take embryos at diff uh, from different embryos and you try to, to, to do like a time course of development, uh, how do you stitch data together from different uh, samples? Is it really something that is uh, interesting and what, what it will bring? And, and, and it's clear from experiments done in mice and in, on organoids uh, that a lot of the development is, uh, as also discussed, is a stochastic. Uh, uh, so it's, it's not like a following exactly a very precise and organized uh, uh, pattern. Uh, it's, it's a bit messy, I should say. So, so it's very hard to capture events from fixed samples. So you win, uh, the, the best way is probably to develop organoids and also to try to then use those organoids to do imaging, to do single cells, and to try to, again, capture rare events and, and exactly understand how you can get to a similar organ, maybe with different uh, uh, ways. Um, so, so what we couldn't define, but <laughs> important questions, and I hope we're going to keep interacting with people who are there, and also we like to your input, is uh, what are exactly the, uh, the main mechanistic questions we'd like to address? And I think it's also very important for us, a uh, message is to try to uh, convince the uh, deontobiology community to participate to this atlas. We are not so many uh, uh, here yet. Uh, so I hope, uh, I was thinking maybe we should like provide, uh, make like one slide or two slides that we can add to our talks when we go to meetings to try to uh, have people joining us. Because we need deontobiology people to try to, to, to tell us, okay, what is the, the, thing, the main question and, and what we should do. Um, so, so we discuss uh, uh, about uh, markers. So can we use any kind of uh, markers for us? What are the best ones? And, and it's not only that we want to capture the uh, identity of, of the cell, but also the state of the cell during uh, its uh, developmental program. And that's also something that is really uh, very important. So something for, uh, for computation, so it's true for, for, for many things, but in particular for imaging. The data we're generating, they are larger and larger. So now we're not talking about, we're talking about terabytes of data per experiment that we're generating. And, and now you have to do like, for instance, uh, uh, one challenge, can you count nuclei in a whole embryo if we stand all the nuclei image, all the nuclei? So you have like billions of cells there. So we don't have any kind of algorithm or way now at the moment to count billions of cells in an image I will give you with all the nuclei labeled. 
We don't know how to do it. If you want to do also automatic segmentation, a lot of the thing we do for imaging is done by hand. So we really need people to develop like algorithm methods to do automatic segmentation, automatic cell counting, just to save time on the uh, analysis. So it's really something that it's not only for biologists, we really need uh, computation people and then uh, it's really something we're not very good at. Okay, and, and of course, uh, ethical challenge will have to be, uh, to be discussed. So I think I will, uh, will stop here because I'd like to get your input and uh, because we couldn't be in all the sessions. Thank you. Great, that's fantastic, Alan. Um, does anyone have any questions, points for discussion on the developmental atlases? Okay. Coming from behind you. Uh, what is your plan? Are you planning to take uh, all tissues or as many tissues as you can from a same embryo or fetus? I mean, it, that, that might change according to the age of development in terms of what is feasible or not and what is your thought regarding that? So, so we just talk about my experience and what also is done in England here. Uh, yeah, they are rare <laughs> tissue, so obviously what we need to define is, 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 and what we need to work is to try to use as much as we can from any kind of uh, sample we get. So, so, so even if you work like people now, for instance, I speak for the French uh, system, they will get embryos to, to get cell, liver cells, but they won't get the other cells. They won't, they won't. It's, it's not coordinated at a national level. Okay? It's done in, in the UK, it's not done in France, in any other places in Europe. So one challenge, for instance, and that's something we're discussing at the European level, is to try to have a way to coordinate this. So, so not to lose anything. It's rare, it's uh, ethical, it's important. If you collect, so, so if we can use as much as we can, that, that, that the deal. So what they have in the UK is very well implemented. The person who does, I think she, maybe she's in the room, who does a dissection of the, uh, uh, of the embryo, she has a list and a wish list of people who want like a kidney, uh, 14 weeks or whatever, and then she, she gets all the samples she can. So, so I think, and the other one, you can freeze them or you can use them for, for later. So, so the idea is really to take as much as we can from those, uh, those um, was samples uh, to a certain uh, uh, limit, for sure. Okay, that, that sounds very reasonable. Okay. Okay, another elephant in the lab channel problem. <coughs> Look, we're, we're just not gonna get high resolution human development. It's, you, you know, some heroic efforts will be made, there'll be some fantastic samples here and there. It's not gonna really, really connect. Organoids, come on, it's, there, there's so many other factors going on in organoids, it's, it's just, I mean, even if you, you know, sort of map between a high resolution actual development map, let's say from mouse or, or, or rat or something, and then to organoids, it's in, in human organoids, um, it, it just, it's not gonna really make it. So, so look, what, if, if we're gonna do this and get something, you know, the, a, mo a system really understanding higher organism development, it's, the question is, should a commitment be made to um, rhesus or, you know, some primate where you know, real, that where the, the time course of development is, is much more comparable to humans. There's, I mean, so many messes are, are made and overcome in the, in the accelerated development um, lower animal models. It's just, the, the, I think the only way that we're gonna have a, a, you know, a valid framework for looking at human on, on one-off samples is to have a much more continuous map in, you know, from a much closer model organism. So, um, uh, gonna tell, uh, I don't think I fully agree. I don't know. I, I, I don't, <laughs> don't, don't actually agree or see that, actually. I don't know whether you saw the, the sample chart of the human developmental biology resource and how many samples there are for each week. I mean, it is essentially a continuum of time that is available. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just our group. I mean, we, we can get like a, uh, and it's just from one place, maybe 100, 100 embryo and fetuses. So in terms of high resolution, what you call by a high resolution, is it spatially or, or time? What, what is it? Because I want to know step A to step B, uh, what's, a, what's actually getting accomplished as you transit from step A to step B. So, so in snapshot-based um, profiles of you know, one-off samples, that maybe you can, you can do some sort of a maturational culturing, but, but it's, you're going to lose something in, in piecing together completely separate samples and, and stuff. No, uh, it I, won't be perfect, but it's, it, we, we start from, not from nothing, as we discuss, 
But, but still, uh, yes, it's going to be thing. fantastic. I'm just wondering, though, is, could, a, could a, a more valid framework be done in uh, you know, continuous model organism? It's, 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 it's it, maybe, it's but technically. It's territory yeah. with animal rights people. And no, everything, I agree. Yeah. But for the imaging frame in particular, I mean, if you go to primate, the problem will be the same. There's zero difference. Okay, there's no way you can Im image in utero uh, cell division in a uh, macaque or uh, marmoset, okay? So you're gonna have to fix them to image them in 3D. So what's the difference with a, with, with a human uh, fetus? It will be technically the same challenge. Uh, so if a small species, okay, maybe we'll be able to do it, but, but in large primates, there will be no difference. And then it's clear that humans, we are, we are I, mean, I started to work on a few years ago, but we, we are not, uh, if you compare mouse development to human development for many things, it's completely different. Uh, so, it gets into this issue of the perturbome and, and so, you know, activity yeah. dependent changes and, no, and no, of course, you know, of course. genetic effects that it's all modelable in a, you yeah. know, an organism that you have probes into more continuously. Yeah. I think I just want to bring up the issue about this snapshot analysis because actually fundamentally all human work is snapshot. There is no way to fate map human. So I think we actually have to embrace that, you know, uh, as a, as a, a, th a thing that we can't change and actually make the most out of computational analysis. And, 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 and if I look at any system, this is as best a model system to, to look for temporal changes over time because you actually have serial snapshots which can be very close by compared to all the other systems that we think about. I mean, think about disease. Whenever we take a snapshot of disease, we have no idea when the disease actually evolved. What we have is when the patient comes to clinic, and that's the point we sample. And we assume all of those patients are homogenous because they, are, they have whatever disease it is, psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, but they're very different. And the only kind of models that you have in the human setting is either experimental in vivo models, which are extremely difficult, and difficult to actually look over long periods, or people who have treatment, and then you have a time zero. There is no time zero in any human studies, except actually, I think, developmental biology. Um, I would like to um, respectfully disagree with that. Um, <laughs> and um, I think there is numerous population-based studies now um, uh, here in the UK, um, uh, elsewhere in Europe, um, all across North America, where um, there have been large population-based samples um, uh, in Canada, there is um, huge efforts uh, in, in essentially every province. And I think one of the goals of those projects, although they may seem lofty today and they may be unfunded today, but one of the goals of those projects is to look at, to have these inventories as a time zero. So I think although um, what you're saying may hold true as of today, it may not hold true anymore in 10 years when there will be women with breast cancer who have had a, a sample taken uh, of a biological sample XY, uh, which will constitute a baseline for, I don't know, epigenomics or something, some analysis, and in 10 years, uh, they may have breast cancer. So I think uh, the, this is a, a moving target. And uh, I do see the point that a continuous high quality source of um, samples for development um, could contribute. I, I see the pros and the cons, but I think there are studies who will give us a time zero in the future. That has to be kept in mind. No, no I agree. I mean, I think in the future that's a great you know, projection, but this is what we have now, and if we want to do anything, we have to kind of face the current issues. Uh, but it still comes back to the sort of perturbation system and sort of modeling, you know, sort of what hap you know, when these decisions are being made, that's still going to be very difficult in any uh, human system, you know, even sort of in the future. But there may be new tools, new ways of um, imaging, um, but at the moment we, you know, still don't really have time zero, but we can aspire to have time zero in the future. Great. Uh, one more question, I think, and then we'll move on. It's also more of a comment to, uh, to the previous discussion. I, th I think actually development is really interesting in the sense that from the computational perspective, maybe linking to the previous session, is that we have a, a time series of signals RNA-seq, for example, also potentially combined with imaging. And I think the questions you can ask there are rather different than from just simple differential expression, which is maybe what we asked in healthy versus disease. And I think the point you make in here, for example, uh, 
check of continuity of a stochastic process? I think it's a very interesting question. If you can, for example, just get an average dynamics, or if you mm -hmm. can really actually learn about some some most more specific events. And I think this has been unexplored. I think one one very simple projection might be just going on a population level and see how those populations change over time that you would infer from from the sequencing data, and then actually go towards really population models that I think in blood, for example, have been done for a long time, but for development, now with this exp uh, explicit, uh, exquisite resolution that I think some of these uh, uh, Atlante are getting, also in Mouse, Bertie showed this yesterday, I think these type of models are becoming a reality and I think it might be interesting to explore further. Great, thank you very much, thank you Alan.